Hello! This video is the reveal video, if you like, if that's what you want to call it, then by all means call it a reveal video, for the Tamiya 148th scale, US, yes I'm reading off the thing here because it's a bloody mouthful, Tamiya US 2.5 ton 6x6 airfield fuel truck in 148th scale no less, as kindly supplied uh, by Jim Stark with it at the Kitmaker Network, check him out. Um, what can I say? It's a Tamiya new tool. Uh, like I said in the review video, when you've got those three words in the same sentence, you're generally talking, if not perfection, then fairly close to it. This one was fairly close to it, I'll have to say. There were one or two... Uh, see, the thing is, I could spend the next ten minutes going on about, you know, extolling all the virtues of this kit. But I'm not going to do it, because you already know what they are, because it's... A, you know what? I think this camera is linked in some way, shape or form to the control tower at Lucas. Because every time I switch the damn thing on and make a video, the buggers take off. Although in this case it's going that way, uh, away from us. Um, the North Sea is that way, so obviously prevailing wind conditions are meaning that the jets are taken off that way. Which is why we hear the roar that we hear now, the afterburners are pointing this way. Whereas if they take off that way, obviously we don't hear that, but we hear the fly past. Where was it? Uh, somewhere about a fuel truck. Yes. Yeah, I, I could go on and on about the, the the virtues of this kit, which there are many, as you would expect. But I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm going to try and keep it as short as possible. What? What are you? The bloody... Yes, you. A bit bloody crow sitting up on the roof of the house there. <sighs> you should probably start this again, shouldn't I? What I'm going to do is just highlight a few things that I thought could have been better. Now, as I say, they are t negligible almost. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm really scraping the bottom of the barrel to find something to nitpick uh, about this kit. Um, so here we go. What were they again? Uh, right, okay. I, I think I mentioned this in the, the review video. The chassis um, could have been... Where went I? Hang on until I get the instructions. I really should have had this prepared a little bit better, shouldn't I? Uh, so that you don't have to sit there whilst I faff around like this. Uh, there we go. The US filter is on the top. Nope. Yeah, the chassis was pretty much kind of one piece. You know, the, the gearbox, the transfer box were all moulded in. The axles and the propeller shafts again were all one part and I think I said during the, the uh, review video that that really could have been you know, maybe a dozen, dozen and a half parts for us to... We, we buy these as construction kits because we enjoy constructing them uh, we don't want things done for us it's, you know, blah 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 the whole thing about pre-painted self-adhesive photo etch, I mean what the hell is that all about? Um, it's, it's just, we, we would balk at buying a kit that was already painted wouldn't we? So why are we buying things that are already done for us? So that's one very, very small nitpick. The other one, and li we're literally talking two or three here, uh, it was the windscreen uh, piece, the clear part, which had the moulded in windscreen wipers, which were an absolute nightmare to mask and paint properly. I, w I mean, okay, they are quite fine, but I mean, this is Tamiya, yeah, they could produce very, very finely moulded, injection moulded parts. So there was no reason that they couldn't have had those as separate parts so that we could have painted them and then stuck them on rather than having to try and, you know, the fiddly wee bits around the top part of the, the windscreen wipers. And the decals. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's an old Tamiya kit or a brand new Tamiya kit, the decals are a nightmare in terms of thickness. And, again, this was no exception. So to circumvent that, what I did was... There was nothing I could do about the, the actual stencil text. The US Army Air Forces that on the, the side of the tank, either side of the, the tank, and the USA and its serial number on the, the bonnet, or hood as you call it in the States. So I had to use the decals there. But for the star on the, the cab roof and the doors and the hood uh, and the one on the back, what did I use a decal for that? Um, I, I, I cut them, I used the decal sheet as a template. What you do is you, you use the yeah, thick mask and tape, if you can get it, put it down on your cutting mat, 
put the decal sheet over that, sellotape them so that there is no movement whatsoever and then using a brand new, very very sharp obviously, scalpel blade, cut out the appropriate shape, whatever it is, in this case it's a star, uh, and obviously that goes right through to the, the masking tape and you have your, your template to, to use as a mask. The circular part, um, the round hole, I just used the compass cutter and some tape to get that. The reason being is, especially on the on the side here, I went for the, 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 the version of the truck that has the smallest text on the side because weathering here would be running down, so you have these streaks down this, the, the curvature of the, the tank. And with the, de the decals being so thick, you do actually have a little step, you know, it's greatly magnified. So any weathering can build up here, so you can actually sort of see the outline of the carrier film. Um, which I actually, I'm just as I've moved here, the light has actually caught the edge of the carrier film. So it, it, it looks like it's, you know, in relief as it were, which it wouldn't normally be. So that's why I decided to mask and paint these so that I could weather them. Um, sympathetically with the rest of the, the surface of the vehicle. Other than that, as I say, it was almost snap fit in cases. In some cases, it went together with considerable haste um, because there was no problems whatsoever. Uh, the figures were very, very good. I ain't no figure painter by any stretch of the imagination, so I just went with a little fueling dude, and even that took me about five goes over two days to get his face the way it was until I got to a stage where I was like, okay, back off, back away. There ain't no more you can do to that face that you haven't already done. You, you got a GI and you got a, a seated figure, even though it's not listed anywhere um, for the cab, but I, I omitted those. Um, I stuck with one. I got away with one and that's it. Um, and he's, he's turned out okay. He's not actually attached to the base here. He's actually standing on one foot because of the, the, the tension in the the, the hose which has the, the bit of copper wire through it. I don't fix my things to the the, the bases because when we go to shows the models have to be packed very carefully separately from the bases. So he's kind of floating around at the moment. Uh, I just have to kind of sort of position him each time. <laughs> but uh, maybe it's the fumes of course. But yeah there we go. Uh, US fuel, <coughs> excuse me, US fuel truck conveniently done in 148 scale so you can put it with your other your aircraft uh, as opposed to being 135th. Nothing to see here, move along as it were. So there we go, uh, there will be a couple of videos coming up very shortly, I've got quite a few things to do. Uh, there's Aaron Newland's uh, Matchbox group build, I've got the other uh, kit maker supplied kit, the uh, Westland Whirlwind which is taking shape, I can see it just over there. Uh, Cohen's Kursk group build which I have I think a contender for that, so um, watch this space. Toodaloo the new.